The future of Madison is on the starting block. That's next on For the Record. I'm Neil Heinen. Buildings are a piece of not just our civic infrastructure, but our identity. Think State Capitol, Bascom Hall, Monona Terrace, and Overture. There is a building soon to be going up on East Washington Avenue that will further define our city in some profound ways. It's another piece in the historic redevelopment of the Capitol East District. It's another major piece of architecture that is creating a new neighborhood. And it's a place where a good chunk of Madison's future economy and more will be spawned if not housed. It is called Starting Block, and I am joined by the executive director of Starting Block, Scott Resnick, the director of innovation for American Family Insurance, Ryan Rist, and the guy who is building this building, and a couple of others nearby, the founder of Gebhardt Developments, Otto Gebhardt. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on. Thanks, Otto, nice to see you again. Thank Scott, you welcome back. Us. And Ryan, welcome to For the Record. Thank you. Um, maybe just since this building doesn't exist yet, Scott, if you can just explain what this is and where it is and why this is so important. Absolutely. So this will be a 50,000 square foot center of innovation where new ideas can grow here in Madison. It's going to be on the 800 block of East Washington, and it will bring together entrepreneurial groups that have been a figure uh, of the Madison ecosystem for the last five years. Generator, which is a tech accelerator. Uh, Sector 67, which is a makerspace. If you want to go explore 3D printing, what's happening in drone technology, uh, welding, this is where you go. And Capital Entrepreneurs, which is an association of 200 uh, small entrepreneurial companies are right here in Madison. We'll be taking all these resources and putting them under one roof. The project is called Starting Block, and we're excited to uh, uh, announce that we'll be breaking ground uh, this winter. What's the, why all under one roof? One, one, one roof? What's, the, what's the importance of that? Yeah, you know, there's two pieces when you talk about entrepreneurship, when you talk about innovation and new ideas. Uh, you know, the first piece is innovation doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's so rare when one person goes out and says, you know, Eureka, I have a great idea, I'm just gonna go on it alone. Almost always, there's a team, there's mentors, there's resources, it doesn't happen in a vacuum. But second, we find out it's the density of innovation and creative thought. So it's when two or three companies are co-located right next door to each other. And you can see that even in the innovation that's happened here in Madison. When you think about American Girl doll and Epic Systems, Judy Faulkner and Pleasant Roland had offices right next door to each other on Old University Avenue. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to take the next generation of leadership, put them all under one roof, and see what kind of creative thoughts that can come forward. All right, I wanna, I wanna delve into that a little, a, a little bit more, and, and we'll talk about American Families' involvement in that, but, but just staying on the building for a minute, Otto, mm -hmm. have you ever done anything like this particular project? Not, not of this type of a mix. Yeah. Um, we're, we're big advocates for urban infill, for mixed use, and the proper mixed use. And I think this just hits a home run with what we're trying to develop in this Cap East district. Now, you're doing the, the two buildings um, across the street, uh, roughly, the right. Constellation, Constellation Project. And, Constellation's finished, Galaxy and the Gala is underway. And, and the Galaxy Project. Yeah. Does this feel of a piece to you? Oh, yeah. This is a, this is a phenomenal piece of the mix, uh, creating the synergies with the young startups and the tech companies. We've got Google headquartered in the Constellation building right now. Certainly not a startup, but uh, you know, we, so we just see that, that this is a huge part of the mix that re and really makes it unique you know, that other areas just don't have. And everybody we've talked to feels the Capital East District has more potential than any place else, probably in the region, for density, diversity, mixed use, yeah. and amenities. I mean, the point is, is that it, it, it's not out of the question that the next Google comes mm -hmm. out of starting block. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, just as an example, mm -hmm. it's possible. So when we, uh, as capital entrepreneurs, and we're looking at where do we want to house this building, this project, uh, we did a survey of all these smaller tech companies, under 20 employees here in the Madison area. Mm -hmm. We had 87 responses to that survey, and well over 50% said they wanted to be exactly in the Capital East District. Right. So we see this as the area of new innovation, of new ideas, uh, 
a little bit less expensive than the Capitol Square, but mm -hmm. an area that can grow out uh, not only in the next, uh, you know, in the next two, three years here, but in the next next decade or yeah. so. One thing I like to say, I just like to add to that, is that what you're going to get in the Capitol East District is going to be completely transformed in the next five years. Yeah. Where you go to other areas, it, it's probably going to be kind of stagnant to a point. But this this has really the ability to really transform into something unbelievable. Yeah. Now the starting block is is a public private partnership, right? Yes. I mean, there's 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 a number of components to it. And Ryan, American Family has clearly made the strategic decision to invest in this kind of work. Tell 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 us about that. Yeah. Well, I, I look at it as a continuation. You know, we've been actively contributing to our communities for 88 years. Uh, you can look go back and look at things like the American Family Ch Children's Hospital. I think. More recently, we've realized that we've sort of put a renewed focus on innovation, and it really comes down to two things. It comes down to, you know, we're, we're one of the largest employers in the area. We want to attract and retain the best and the brightest. And, and two, and probably most importantly, it comes down to our customers. Um, there's a lot of brilliant entrepreneurs who are creating amazing products and services that are changing the way businesses um, operate. And, um, you know, for example, uh, the smart home. Is something we've been actively involved with both from a venture capital investor and a partnership standpoint um, if we can proactively protect our customers with technology and prevent them from having fire and water damage that um, is a really negative experience I think it's a win for them and it's a, it's a, it's a win for us yeah dream bank is an example right of, of what American family's been doing lately yeah, yeah dream Bank's a great example and I think it speaks to what American family uh, what we all believe uh, in the company which is we have this intense focus on the customer um, and, and we want insurance to be more than what it is today I think in the past insurance has been re very reactive something bad happens and insurance is there for you and we think we can play a more proactive role an everyday role in uh, people's lives Scott you and I were in, in Chicago last year visiting 18 1871 uh, one of one of the co-working spaces there are several nationally 1871 is uh, is an interesting example and one of the things that struck me was what we now refer to as sort of the ecosystem the presence of the mm -hmm. ecosystem in that building and that's companies that are there watching what's going on supporting the entrepreneurial startup activity there and it strikes me that American Family is an example of that. Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, you know, in places like 1871 and you, you hit it right on the head in your opening, it's a piece of civic infrastructure. It's companies that might go in with one or two employees into 1871, someone with a new idea, and to have partners like uh, American Family Insurance or Madison Gas and Electric not only being able to uh, see these companies but help mentor these companies through being able to potentially invest in it and essentially grow these companies uh, inside uh, you know their own city uh, it becomes a truly a piece of civic infrastructure and we're seeing these centers pop up all over the country uh, 1776 in Washington DC galvanized in Denver Colorado uh, impact hub in Salt Lake City you know what we're talking about is what's going to be next for Madison and and thanks to folks like um, uh, uh, American Family Insurance and our other partners to it, they're the ones that are making this a reality for our community. All right, when we come back, I want to I want to continue to sort of paint the picture of what Cap East District is going to look like and the role that Starting Block is going to pay. And we'll do that right after this. I am back with Scott Resnick, who in addition to his day job and his night job is also the executive director of Starting Block, Otto Gebhardt, who is building Starting Block, and Ryan Riss, who is the director of innovation for American Family, one of the, one of the real um, foundational supporters of Starting Block. And we're trying to talk about what Starting Block is. And, and uh, Otto, just in, in the context of the Cap East District, I, I think what people don't realize is over the last 15 years, really, there's been a conversation about what that district could be and should be. Mm -hmm. uh, people see a lot of your buildings going up, a lot of mixed use, but housing, uh, apartment uh, buildings. Starting block is, is that employment piece. And right. this was always looked at as a jobs hub. You know, that was, that was the piece that the, that the neighbors wanted. Right. Um, so that really makes starting block important. And it is that, but it's much, it's more. Talk about what more it is. Well, I mean, just as an example, we get so much uh, attention and people coming to us regarding the starting block piece, and they want to be near starting block. Right. So you get other companies that, that, that are calling all the time that go, just we want to be 
next to starting block. We want to be in the vicinity. So you see those synergies. These are ecosystem so important. companies right. that we we're talking about. Yep, right. yep, yep, yep. Right. So not even if they don't fit into starting block, they want to be in that area. And I think it just feeds off of you know one another, the the, the synergies and and the the grouping of these types of businesses. You know, people of like minds want to kind of be sharing ideas and you know being in the same uh, common social spaces and things. And there's space for those businesses to oh, do yeah. that there. Absolutely, absolutely. We're trying to build the whole, everything we're doing in, in the corridor, we're trying to do with public spaces and meeting spaces. And um, for instance, we have Frank Productions is gonna go in as a base in, uh, in the building next to Starting Block. And that will be opened during daytime use uh, for lectures and different gatherings. Well, I think that's important because when you think of Constellation and the Galaxy, there's there's food venues there, there's shopping there, right. and so now yeah. the music venue right. and is another sort venue. of part of the amenities that mm -hmm. are going to develop along Cap East as part of that right. district. Right, and we, we're just excited because it's going to. We're trying to. We, we envision it has a very dense, diverse. You know, corridor the Cap East District that's very walkable. It has the amenities, so you don't necessarily need a car. Um, you're, you know, you're between two great neighborhoods: the Marquette neighborhood where I grew up and the Tenney Lapham neighborhood. Yeah. You're an eight-minute walk to the square. You know, you got Bree Stevens, which is now being activated with a ton of cool things. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's just everything's coming together, and everybody else is buying into the vision, and we've got great support and uh, people buying into it with American Family, MG&E. Uh, starting block, of course, and it, so it's really exciting right now. Well, and, and, and it's hard to paint this picture. I mean, people almost need to see it, but it's a, it's a community place. Yeah, that's, that's how we view it. It's, it's really about collaboration. Um, uh, it's, it's about everybody coming together and, and helping uh, ensure long-term economic development, long-term success of Madison. Mm -hmm. There's almost this intersection. When you think about what takes a, a strong entrepreneurial community, you know, it, it's usually happening in very creative places. And you, whether it's Richard Florida and his research showing that, but what you're seeing is, you know, this will be a space where not only, you know, entrepreneurship intersects, mm -hmm. but it's that intersection of art and music as well. So much of the creativity, the vitality, uh, what's going to thrive in Madison, what makes us great, are all seem to be converging onto one point uh, within this sort of uh, you know three block region. So whether it's the new restaurants that will be right. uh, very you know very close by, mm -hmm. uh, you know Sujo and the others that are now open, whether it's Star Bar, uh, whether it's going to be a live music entertainment venue with over 2,000 seats, we're going to see a lot of activity, and I think that's going to be the exciting part for Madison in the future. That's right. Just, again, the connection between American family and, for example, supporting the arts is, is a stretch for some people. And yet, when it, it, that's what I like so much about the Dream Bank, is when you talk about American family's investment in people's dreams and making their dreams a reality. Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, the arts is very much a part of that. It's a very much a part of it. And I think if you went back in our 88-year history, you'd see a series of um, investments we've made in being a part of a, um, each community that we operate in. And Madison's very, very special to us. Um, who's going to uh, who's going to be in there uh, other than the than the core groups that you've mentioned, Scott? Yeah. So what we're bringing is in our younger tenants, and this is a company. You know, when you start a company, you know, first off, you know, financially it's always stressful, but really when you're trying to find in and sign your first office lease, it's difficult. Uh, you know, so a, a landlord may be asking you for a five-year lease and you're saying, I don't know if our company's going to make it the next five months. So our goal is, is to have an area where you can go in and look for very flexible office space, particularly for companies that are looking to scale. So this is very different, for example, than, than the UW Research Park. I, I, exactly. UW Research Park is great for lab and wet space uh, areas. Now, they have a presence also on East Washington. Yep. It does seem like they will be continuing a presence there. Uh, Aaron Oliver, who's the new executive director, uh, my former counterpart at the city of Madison, and now, with, now with, uh, a good friend who's over at Research Park. Mm -hmm. Great work that they're doing on the west side. It's for a number of these tech companies to be able to co-locate. Uh, right now, we put it open for several companies to be able to come in. We're able to announce at least two that have signed letters of intent to be here, mm -hmm. being uh, Aboto. Uh, which does uh, apartment management mm -hmm. uh, that Ryan may be able to talk about as uh, an investor in Aboto. Yep. 
uh, as well as Per Blue, which is a gaming company. Uh, we figure we're going to have anywhere between 25 and 30 uh, companies in starting block at any given time, uh, being able to interact not only with each other, but as well as the community. Could you take a minute and explain about oh, just because it's a good example. Yeah, you know, I think um, Oboto is, is an example of um, how we can use technology to, um, to be more interactive with people and to, to, to serve them when and where they want to be served. And I think, broadly speaking, we, we do a lot of things. We, and I think our venture capital team um, is a good example of where we're making minority equity investments in startups that are changing the way business gets done. And ultimately, it comes back for us to delighting customers. Um, we're intensely focused on serving our customers, and if we can do that when and where they want to be served, how they want to be served, um, and if we can change insurance to be more proactive, and if we can have a uh, everyday role in people's lives and, and this broad idea of protecting them and protecting what matters most to them, it makes sense for us, it makes sense for our customers, and technology, really, really bright people like the founders at Aboto are creating those products and services that, that help us move and forward. Just talking wildly speculatively, mm -hmm. Scott, are Aboto and Perblue the kinds of companies that have the potential to eventually outgrow starting block? Yes, yeah. and that's actually the goal. I want to see, ten I want to boot tenants out because they're too big. And that's really the end goal. It's about scaling companies. You mm -hmm. might get your start right here in starting block, but in the end, uh, it, it's back to the entire community. And our goal is keep these companies right here in Madison, be able to grow them locally, uh, and then make, you know, I'm not going to say we're going to necessarily have the next epic, but along those trajectories, making sure that we're building the next generation of Madison-based companies. Starting Block is a place that is really inviting public participation, and we're going to talk about that when we come back right after this. Scott Resnick, the executive director of Starting Block, Otto Gebhardt, the founder of Gebhardt Developments and a guy who's putting up a lot of buildings on East Washington Avenue. And Ryan Riss, who's the director of innovation from American Family Insurance, a major investor in this community, including Starting Block. Join me this morning as we're talking about, about Starting Block. Um, all right, so let's be as clear as we can here about the finances of all of this, Scott. Um, American Family is a, is, is a major foundational in, investor in this. but. Part of the point, I guess, right, is, is community investment as well. Yes. So to make this project a reality, we still have a gap. And right now, as that gap continues to shrink, we're continuing to get more and more momentum. We still have nearly a, a $1.2 million gap as of today still in the project. So we have two different components uh, as, as we're closing that gap. Uh, the one that I'm most excited about is our uh, block funding campaign. This is a crowdsourcing measure. Uh, the website is launched today where individuals, anybody in the community, uh, can invest in this piece of community, this community asset. Uh, for $25, you can buy a block right now uh, to help us get to that capital campaign goal. Uh, from that, uh, it's a campaign. You're able to upload a photo uh, or a picture to that. And hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a beautiful mosaic of all of our various founders for the campaign itself. Uh, right now, we've launched it. Uh, I'm very excited to already see uh, the tremendous amount of support and upbringing. But really, with any kind of entrepreneurial venture, it takes a community to build these kind of ideas. So while you can stand on your block at Monona Terrace, yes, this one is, is, this is, is a virtual, a virtual one. block. You'll go online and find it there. Even better, more money ends up going to the organization itself. <laughs> but it, it really does allow anybody in the community to have that piece of civic infrastructure. Whether you look at that on the Overture Center, whether it's your tax dollars or a personal check going to it, whether it's Monona Terrace and the Brick mm -hmm. Campaign, in the union itself. Uh, you know, here in Madison, we seem to take a lot of civic pride, and it's one of the beautiful parts about the city. But being able to invest in projects that uh, you know that represent our city, and this, uh, what better one than Starting Block? So, Ryan, this is uh, American Family is joining in and saying partner with us, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we've made a significant financial contribution, but this isn't just about us. This is about the long-term economic health and and future of Madison and. Uh, we care about that. That's important to our business, it's important to us as our customers, and I know there's other businesses out there that feel the same way. So we want broad support 
for this. It's going to be successful with, we think, broad, uh, broad community support. And you've had other businesses partner with you in, in, in stuff in, in, in the A past. Absolutely. <laughs> and as, as uh, Scott Otto mentioned, you know, having this community that we often see startups, uh, entrepreneurs, really wonderful, bright New, new concepts, new ideas that may not be relevant for us, but are relevant for some of our local partners in other industries. And so we often find that that, that collaborative environment, it's helpful for, for everyone. Right. And just to be clear here, Otto, while this might be a challenge for you to have this mm -hmm. financing piece that's separate from the financing that you're putting into this, sure. this isn't money that's being raised to complete. Right you know, Gebhardt Development's part of this, Right. you're sitting there watching to see how this comes together as well. Of course, of course, and I, I think it was huge when American Family got involved and uh, it really made it real, I think, at that time. Uh, so now at this point, again, we, we see so many synergies and so much interest that, um, you know, Scott says, you know, we may not even have enough space in the total box, so to speak. Right. So. Yeah, and really what you're you know, what that investment is getting you is not only for the startups to be able to grow, but all of the various community elements. And I think that's the, the rotating word that we continue to use. But what that really means is, you know, the educational components. And Chris Meyer, who's been very involved in the community itself, Sector 67, which is offering uh, exposing students to 3D printers. Yeah, that relationship with East High School is going to be pretty cool, too. Uh, Mike Hernandez, the new principal at East High School, someone who I've worked with for years, is so excited just to figure out what we'll be able to do to make sure that a senior who might be trying to figure out, you know, what kind of trade do I want to go into, has a place to learn that uh, at starting block. Uh, not, so all of the elements uh, that take a community to really build around, particularly on that educational component, that's what the community is investing in. At Starting Block M, donate startingblockmadison.org, startingblockmadison.org. That's where people can go get their block, and particularly for businesses that are interested in, in helping it, as well. It, you know, it's in businesses, but it's you know really focused on those individuals. Yep. $25 a block, and we would encourage everybody to go online, Donate.startingblockmadison.org is the U is the URL, uh, and, and we're excited for the campaign. Why don't we do this again in a year? That'd be great. <laughs> when, 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 it, when it's up and going. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thank we're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. My thanks to the Starting Block team. Thank you for joining us on For the Record. We'll see you next week.